I'm standing here in front of Federal Fort Stedman within Petersburg National Battlefield. By March of 1865, General Robert E. Lee realized his Army of Northern Virginia could no longer hold on to Petersburg and the Confederate capital of Richmond, 25 miles north. His troops were spread out nearly 37 miles in trenches defending those two cities, defending the rail lines into Petersburg, his vital supply lines that remained. And his troops are outnumbered nearly two to one by Grant's armies. At the same time, William T. Sherman and his federal forces are coming up through the Carolinas behind Lee. He realizes he can't maintain this position much longer. He hopes to be able to get down to North Carolina to join up with General Joseph Johnston and the Army of Tennessee, perhaps then defeating Sherman. To allow his army to get out, he needs some breathing space. He needs to release this grip that Grant has around the south and west side of Petersburg. To do that, Lee plans to attack just east of Petersburg in this area where the lines are the closest. In some cases, less than 200 yards separates the two sides' trenches. Uh, Lee will turn to General John B. Gordon, commanding the Second Corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. His troops occupy this stretch of the Confederate line, and Lee charges Gordon with planning this attack. It's set for the morning of March 25th, before dawn, and the plan is a good one. It's to come across these fields quickly, quietly, nearly special forces-like battalions of sharpshooters will clear the way of all the wooden obstructions. They will not even fire a shot. They will only use their bayonets, and they will subdue the garrisons of Fort Stedman and the batteries on either side of it very quickly. Almost a thousand Union prisoners are taken. But almost immediately, things start to go wrong for the Confederates. Uh, they begin moving north and south, and those forces are stopped. The Union Army is able to put a stop to this breakthrough in both directions. Also, Confederate troops will be heading further east, trying to cut the railroad that is Grant's supply line just behind these lines. These soldiers get lost amidst a vast array of Union trenches, winter quarters, bomb proofs, dugouts. It's like a maze. And they also begin realizing as they go through these Union camps of the 9th Corps that occupied this stretch, those cabins are filled with food, they're filled with warm clothes, things that Lee soldiers don't have enough of. And those Confederate veterans begin stopping, picking up that food. It slows down all the momentum that this attack still has. Meanwhile, the Ninth Corps is waking up to what's happening. They begin counterattacking this Confederate breakthrough. Some of these Union soldiers have only been in the Army for a few months. They enlisted right after Lincoln's re-election. This will be their first real taste of battle, but they will form up and begin pushing the Confederates back until finally Confederate soldiers that have made this breakthrough are trapped themselves right back here in Fort Stedman. And they now have the choice to go back across this open field, this no man's land, now swept by Union artillery, or to surrender. And several thousand of them decide to give up rather than run this gauntlet. The attack is a failure, and Lee has lost somewhere in the neighborhood of between three and 4,000 irreplaceable veterans from his army, many of them prisoners. What Grant realizes in the aftermath of this battle is that Lee had to pull some of his forces away from other stretches of the line to make this assault. And Grant will order his troops further down the lines to probe for weak spots, to overrun stretches of the Confederate picket line. And that will come into play in just a few days.